Hi everybody. Continuing work on the elevators with the new bucking bar. I have a guest here, my friend Kurt, who is a uh, Cirrus driver, very interested in home-built aircraft. Like me, his mission is basically him or one other person. And uh, while the Cirrus is nice, he would rather have something his own. So right now we're working on riveting the two sets of ribs together. Uh, not very easy. Uh, thankfully I have the Supremo uh, pop rivet gun. I got a Stanley rotating head gun. So uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, I have a shim plate there in the foreground that you can see. I actually didn't buy it uh, as a shim plate. I actually bought it to create uh, a rivet puller kind of tool to supply some extra spacing between the area where the pop rivets go and where the pop rivet gun is inside of the elevators. However, I didn't need it. Uh, pop, uh, pop rivet gun fit back there just fine. And thankfully I have very good grip. 35 years of playing golf and pretty good grip. So, uh, anyway, we're just sitting here discussing uh, home-built aircraft and all that so uh, got the bucking bar all I have left to do on these elevators now I think both of the tray uh, rears have been done and so now we're just doing the riveting of the ribs and so I decided to give everyone a nice close-up riveting the front ones relatively easy Riveting the rear uh, ones, not quite as easy. A heck of a lot easier than it was getting into the back of the rudder, I'll tell you that. You only need to do one in the back of the rudder, because I you can't really get to the back one, period, at all. Or, I'm, I mean, the back of the two holes. It, it, it's the same setup here as it is, basically, in the, in the rudder, only the rudder comes to a point. Uh, both ribs have two pop rivet uh, places in the back and two in the front. The only difference between this and the rudder is that these have two-part ribs. The rudders were three parts, where it was two stiffeners on each skin with a cross uh, brace in between the two. This just has two pieces, and the cross brace is supplied by uh, one of the rib pieces. Here, uh, we, uh, yeah, here I am riveting the access plate for the trim motor mount trim plate access. It's hard keeping all the terms together. I want to be specific. I want to be correct about all of them, but I be <laughs> while I'm doing these, I don't have the plans in front of me, so memorizing all the part names is pretty impossible. So it's like, that's the door where the trim motor goes, or that's the trim motor access panel, blah, blah, blah. If I don't stay consistent with the names of things, I do apologize. However, I am a moron, and technical uh, specs are not my forte. Anyway, back to riveting of the ribs. So the left one done. Everything's in place. Now over to the right. And it's six ribs apiece. I thought the best way to keep the balance between doing the uh, ribs is I did the two middle ribs first. And I did the back rivets and then the front rivets. And then did the uh, next ribs outward. And then the next ribs out from that. And that was all six. And now once all of these are in place and all the ribs are done, the very next thing you do, which we will be doing here in a second, is taking the front spars and putting them in place, the main spars, and pop riveting those into the ribs. And one thing I learned from the rudder is uh, Clecos are your friend. I had probably a one... Oh gosh, probably one 
it, it doesn't seem like a lot, but probably a quarter of a millimeter, or a little bit less than that, of a problem with the rudder skins when I was lining them up because I didn't use enough Clecos to make sure everything was lined up before I started riveting. So I riveted one side, went back, went to rivet the other, and the skin was just ever slightly off. Uh, once I put a couple of, uh, once I Clecoed everything back in, it basically shimmed the sh uh, skin over. Uh, and made for a tighter fit, but I would prefer to have everything perfectly fit before I start riveting, so that was a uh, lesson learned. Here the rotating head of that pop river gun really comes into its own. I can just uh, rotate it around 180 degrees and now I have a pop river gun that just basically goes away from me, which really helps. Now with all those riveted in place, now I'm doing some specialty rivets. Uh, Vans doesn't have you seal up all of the skins everywhere yet because you still have to rivet some gussets in, and some side pieces, and uh, the edge ribs. So we'll be doing that here and into the next video. So see you soon.